Greetings, my friends, my Christian friends, and Jewish brothers that are uh, out and that watch these videos. Today, I am coming to you to kind of update you on the things that are going on concerning the book Yam Suf that I have been writing now for almost two years. On Rosh Hashanah, my editor sent me the first edited version of the book. Um, we had already gone through and done most of the correction. We are in the process of this, the final edit of the book, and uh, that should be done actually probably by Yam Sukkot. Uh, kind of ironic, it wasn't something that we intended or planned. In fact, actually, we were looking at a later date of the book being completed at the, at the rate we were going. Um, but I want to reach out to you as my Christian friends especially. Uh, I did the video not too long ago sharing with you about the four corners of the uh, tzitzit, the prayer garment that, that the Jews that we wear under our garment and how that I believe that that was a sign that God gave to the children of Israel to be in constant prayer. Not only was it given for us to remind us of the law, but part of that law or promise we might say was that the children of Israel would return once again to Israel in the last days. Uh, we find this also um, written in the, the Tanakh, where God promises that we would return many places. Uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, uh, for the rest restoration of his name, to, to um, sanctify the name of Hashem. And so, uh, as a people, our people have returned, and it's been, there's been a great contribution by the Christian people in doing so. But there's also Christians that wonder, well, is this really the hand of God? Because they're not believing that uh, Yeshua, Jesus, is Messiah. And yet, that's for an appointed time. And part of what I have really felt passion to do is to reach out to my own people to identify Jesus as Moshiach ben David. And God has really enlightened me in so many areas that many prominent rabbis have uh, taken a more, uh, more serious look at the work that I'm doing. And this book is a huge project in, in that area there. Um, the book, though, however, is, is being published by Faithful Life Publishers. But it's still a project to where, in order to get the book out to the people, it, it does cost money. And those of you that do know me know that I hate even asking for something like that in the first place because I believe that Christians should not uh, be bombarded with, with those type of requests. You hear it all the time on television and everything else. Um, and then some people might think, uh, you know, well, if you're doing a book, it's a book that will bring you money to begin with. I just want to share with you a few a few things about this though. My ministry for the most part has been supported by my own family. Um, I'm not able to quite do this full time although I do try to dedicate my most of my life to um, more so reaching out to the Jewish people but naturally the Jewish people are not necessarily going to support this work. Uh, although however if you knew behind the scenes what's going on, two of the editors uh, that have worked with me on this book are both Jewish. Uh, their names will probably not be revealed because of that, but they are Jewish. And so it's a very ironic situation that we have here. And in wanting to get our people to recognize who Jesus is, I know God has a plan in how he's going to do all these things, but perhaps we can reach some even before God sends the two witnesses on the scene. And uh, I'm going to share with you in just a moment here an excerpt from the book, just so you can kind of see what it's like. But the reason why I'm coming to you, most people may realize, such as Dr. Chuck Missler. I know, I know Chuck very well, and um, uh, I say very well, more, more as an acquaintance, but we are, we are friends. I've kept in touch with him since we did our first interview together. And... But even uh, Dr. Missler, he, the books that he writes help support the ministry because it gives something for the people to be able to have as well. And that's what we're looking at even in this here. The book itself will help, the proceeds will help support the ministry itself because there's no way for me to be able to reach out to you and to be able to bring 
more of these this work to you without that type of support. So we basically will take the proceeds and we'll dedicate that back into the ministry here to be able to make the ministry move forward. Uh, also, I'm not the type of uh, guy that's going to take and um, just make up a bunch of stuff just to kind of tickle people's ears. If God puts something in my heart, I want to share it with you. If he doesn't put it in my heart, then I guess I won't be saying a whole lot. But um, but at any rate, though, the reason why I'm coming to you, we could, we could publish this book at a very reasonable price and um, without photographs, and the book would be no problem to publish. It would just print as people have a request for it, which is re very inexpensive to do. Um, the cost for the editing and the, the actual layout, you know, we pretty much already covered those costs as it is. That's about a $2,000 endeavor, uh, but we paid for that ourselves. And, but I was really uh, pressed by one particular friend who has donated photos to this book that God laid this upon my heart to do it with these photos involved in the book and placed out throughout the book, which causes the book to become a color book, a, co a full color book. And they really impressed in my heart, you know, don't publish this book without doing it the way God has placed it in your heart to do. You should really do it the way God has laid it on your heart. And, you know, just for those that are watching this video, I, and, and you'll see, I'm going to put some of the pictures up on the screen here for you to see some of the some of the pictures that are actually in the book uh, we've had uh, photos donated by the uh, Wyatt family which is uh, Mary Nell Lee uh, we have had photos from the Caldwells that have been so kind to allow us to use photos from Viv Pontian who discovered a chariot wheel on the Saudi side um, Dr. Chuck Missler has uh, allowed us to use uh, his photo as well uh, We've had photos by Dr. David Roll, uh, who did wrote the book Pharaohs and Kings of Biblical Quest, uh, has donated photos for this book. Uh, Dr. Kenneth Hansen, a Hebraic scholar at the University in Orlando of Judaic Studies. Uh, Dr. James Dobson, his people have also uh, permitted, because we quote from him in the book, um, When God Doesn't Make Sense, so they were kind enough to tell us that we were permitted to use uh, Dr. Dobson's uh, picture in the book as well. Um, and, and there's others. I, I just can't begin to think of everybody uh, that has been so kind. And what's really ironic is no one has charged us for using these. Everyone has been kind enough to donate their photos. And I know that there's been some of the photos that we'll be using, that there have been agencies out there that have offered these people thousands of dollars to be able to use their photos and we're not granted permission. So we do count that an honor and a privilege to be able to do so. And the way the book is laid out is, is all, all the way through the book as you're reading it, you're going to get to see different images that express what I was trying to, to write about, especially when I look at the evidence for the Red Sea crossing and putting in photos, um, you know, even the chariot wheel that Ron Wyatt discovered on, on the seafloor will actually be part of the cover of the book. We were given permission to do that. Uh, Dr. David Roll, when we talk about the, uh, the pharaohs of Egypt during the time of Moses, and here Dr. Roll, he's Jewish, um, but when he writes, uh, when, he, when he allowed us to use these photos here, he brings the, the Bible back according to biblical times. So it was fascinating that Dr. Roll was so kind to allow us to use photos as well. Uh, Vivka Pontian, who discovered the chariot wheel on the Saudi side. Uh, so many of these things that are, that are such contributing factors in this book that I wanted people to be able to see the visual so you could relate to what the story is about. But in the, in the last chapter of the book, which is the most lengthy of the book, is where I really take time to share with my Jewish brothers not only the great insight of the Exodus and how that the Exodus, uh, Moses, when he speaks of Yom Suf, how this alludes to a future event, uh, which was an event fulfilled in the Holocaust with the Bielski family, the movie Defiance. Uh, in fact, when you read the book, I would encourage you to watch the movie Defiance. Um, it kind of helps set the stage for you a little bit better of what, what, the, what, the, what the premise of the book is about. But after I go into those great insights that 
Moses not only did the children of Israel cross the Gulf of Aqaba, and there is an evident a trail there for that, but we also see that when he speaks of Yam Suf being a sea of reeds, that he was alluding to a future event, and that event was fulfilled in the Holocaust. And then I begin to piece together, though, from my own Jewish brethren, um, how that the insights in this in the Tanakh also carry over to the Christian Bible. Um, I lightly also address the, the issues where uh, my Jewish brethren, they argue over uh, the genealogy of Jesus. And uh, well, I shouldn't say lightly, that issue is very covered extremely deep in this book here. Uh, it's a way that you can't back out of it. It's a way that you really have to sit down, even as a Jew, you have to sit down and say, well, God had a plan of redemption and now maybe this is really that plan of redemption. So with that, I want to just kind of read to you a little excerpt. And this is uh, from the, uh, the it's, it's what I call a commentary on, on the, the, in the closing, in, in the last chapter of the book. It's where uh, it's about 75 pages long. And it's just bringing out many different aspects that as Jews, it's never been aspects that have been brought out by the Christian community before. So for them, it's new. It's something that, well, this is not tradition. This is not, or this is not traditional. This is not uh, the Christian people trying to convince me of Isaiah 53 uh, or Isaiah 9, 6. This is something different. And maybe there is something to this Jesus of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach, um, of him being Moshiach ben David. So in, in here, and, and I can't tell you exactly what page number it'll be in the book at this time because the layout will be a little different, but it says, I wrote here, in Exodus chapter 4, God speaks to Moses and tells him he will have a return ministry. Whether Moses was aware of this or not is tough to determine. In chapter 4, Moses has met God at the burning bush as in the previous chapter, and it is revealed to him he is the chosen one to lead the children of Israel out of bondage. Moses also has a list of excuses of why he is incompetent for the job. But who are we to instruct the Almighty? The conversation continues into chapter 4. This is where God shares with Moses the signs that he has given him in order to attract the attention of the people. God also demonstrates the signs to make a believer out of Moses by taking his staff, casting it on the ground, turning it into a serpent, then returning it to a staff once again. God then instructs Moses to place his hand in his bosom, and when he pulled it out, it was leprous as snow. Then God instructs Moses to return his hand to his bosom. He then pulled it out again, and it was cleansed. Then the Almighty states, It shall come to pass that if they will not believe thee, nor hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. That's Exodus chapter 4, verse 8. Listen closely to the next sentence. It shall come to pass that they will not believe even these two signs, nor hearken unto thy voice, Exodus 4, 9. The voice of the sign is separate from the signs that God gives Moses to turn his staff to a serpent or his hand to leprosy, which is made evident in verse 9. If they will not believe even these two signs, Exodus 4, 9. This should be obvious when we look at verse 8 because God has declared to Moses emphatically that Israel will believe. They will believe the voice of the latter sign, Exodus 4, 8. So if God says to Moses, if they will not believe even these two signs, he certainly is not speaking of the voice of the sign. The conclusion of the verse 9, wherein God states, nor hearken unto thy voice, is, is in direct reference to the voice of the first sign, or the first coming of Moses. The confirmation of Moses' ministry was, was that whatever he said came to pass, which made his voice a sign in itself to the children of Israel. When Moses returns as one of the two witnesses, he will neither need a staff nor will his hand need to uh, be, be healed. His voice will be the sign. What he says, God will back up with signs and wonders as John records in the book of Revelation. These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. 
have power over waters to return them to blood and to smite the earth with, with all plagues as often as they will. Revelation 11.6. I want to share with you a personal testimony as I am writing the pages of this chapter. My heart is moved. 20 years before writing this portion of this book, I was just a poor young man. But then as, as now, I had a passion for reading the Word of God. Uh, and, and I won't go into that part there. That you can see later in the book. But the, 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 the interesting aspect in this here is that when God was actually speaking to Moses about that sign, he said, if they don't believe you, they'll believe the voice of the latter sign. Now, that was fascinating to me when God revealed that to me, because the voice of the sign and the literal signs that God was giving Moses are completely different. Because God questions in the beginning, will they even believe, you know, he questions whether or not they're going to believe him. And the children of Israel really, from their own obvious actions, did not believe God. But then God comes around and says, yet they will believe the voice of the latter sign. Well, Moses is going to be that voice, which is kind of ironic. It doesn't actually say Moses, but it says the voice of that sign. And so perhaps it'll be just uh, we've seen with Elijah when he went up and the spirit of Elijah came back upon Elisha and Elisha did the works of Elijah. And the people even said, is not this, um, uh, is not the spirit of Elijah resting upon Elisha? Now, could that be what's going to happen in the days that when the two witnesses come upon the earth? Is it going to be the literal Moses and Elijah or is it going to be the spirit of of Elijah on a man and the spirit of Moses upon a man as well, anointing them for that purpose. I know there's a lot of argument among the people when they watch the uh, interview with Dr. Chuck Missler and myself um, that, well, you know, they have to die. It's appointed uh, for man once to die. It, well, if that be the case, then the people that believe that would have to question whether or not a rapture is really true. Or is there going to be a rapture of the Christian church? And if so, when are they going to die? Because if that's the way God intended that scripture to be, then you would have to say that the people that go in the rapture at the end of time would have to die eventually somewhere as well. So there again, you have to wonder how you interpret those verses when you're reading them. In fact, if you go back to the Greek when it speaks about appointed once for man to die, it's not saying that it's an absolute, not in the Greek language. Now, I'm not a Greek scholar, but you could ask a Greek scholar. It's not an absolute. It's just showing that you basically, there comes a time when you will die. Uh, so that would be debatable. Now, in this case here, though, we find, though, that there's going to be the voice of the second sign. And Moses is going to... to um, be believed. He will, his ministry will be received at that time. The Jewish people then will believe him, whereas in the beginning they never really did. Although we do get the law, we do get the commandments, but you have to remember when the children of Israel came out of the wandering of the wilderness, of, of the 40 years in the wilderness, the only two of the original ones that came out from, from going into that wandering was Caleb and Joshua, and the rest of them died. It was only the children of those that came out. Uh, that, that Joshua took across the River Jordan into the Promised Land. So, and, and they were killed because of unbelief. I mean, we see that because Jesus makes a comment to them and says, they speak about their fathers. He said, there be one dead. You know, none of them, in other words, none of them came through. They all died because of their sin and unbelief. Uh, but, but anyway, I'm kind of getting off track here. I get excited about the, the, the revelations that God gives. And... But my, my, my question to you, as, as my friends that, that watch these videos, and I'm not just asking if you, are, if you would like to contribute. You can go to our website, israelreturns.com. Uh, we have a donate button there that's PayPal. I think you can use a credit card or whatever if you want to, if you'd like to give there. But I'd also like to reach out as well to perhaps there is someone that watches this video. And by the way, please share this video with as many of your friends as you possibly can. Um, I believe you as Christians, like the video I released not long ago, you're like the Christians that, uh, like um, Ruth, that we find in the book of Ruth. She gleaned from the four corners of the earth, uh, the four corners of Boaz's field. She is a part 
in the return ministry for the Jewish people, for returning the, the Jews from the four corners of the earth. And uh, even though she is not known by the Jews of what she's doing, you know, you could be sitting there watching this video. The Jewish people may never know that you had a part in that whatsoever. But the thing is, is God knows exactly, you know, what part that you may contribute into that. And, and, and I'm not, I don't mean to insinuate anything by that, but m what I wanted to reach out to people as well, there may be someone out there, there may be a couple of people out there, that would like to do more look at this more as an investment instead and so because we're not just asking people to give those that can give it doesn't matter to me if it's 50 cents it really doesn't every you you would be amazed if 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 you had 10,000 people that gave a dollar for example we would have ten thousand dollars our cost right now just to be able to get the book in print with the pictures that we have as of right now is roughly seven thousand dollars according to the publisher that's to get us a thousand copies in print and um, and if you're and, and, I, and I don't like putting amounts or nothing like that I just whatever God leads you in your heart um, you know and, and if you are able to do something significant that would help cover the cost um, I can tell you now the book will probably retail for around twenty nine dollars just from what I can see thus far um, we would love to be able to send you a copy of that as well. Just if you're going to contribute, though, if there's a way you can let us know. If you do it on PayPal on our website, we would know then who you are. We would be able to send you a copy of the book as soon as it's out. Um, but getting back to the idea, though, if someone, if you wanted to invest, um, we certainly could talk to some someone that would like to do an investment to where they would re get their money returned. In a case like that, though, we're needing, you know, someone maybe even if it was a thousand or or if someone says, you know, I could do the, the entire amount and, you know, but I want to be able to be repaid. We could work up a contract with you uh, to where as the book sells that we would return money, a portion of every book that sells in order to get that paid back with whatever interest that we would be able to, to work out with you on that. So well, we want to reach out in different ways because our objective is to get the book out. Uh, there's many of you that may not be aware of though that this book also is already there's been a reel done I cannot share that with you unfortunately but there has been a film reel done by a production company a very well-known production company for the History Channel's uh, review uh, the History Channel has commented on this already and there's a very strong possibility that this story will appear in the Bible series that will be coming up on the History Channel next year uh, I assume it's next year is when that comes out uh, I've actually got to see the uh, correspondence on that. So we expect the book to be um, uh, to sell well, but there again, the objective is to get it to the Jewish people's hands. I'm sure many, many Christians will buy the book to be able to read it, and that will just empower us to be able to reach out even better to the Jewish community. So again, my heart is just be, be just you know, see how the Lord leads you. Um, we're not going to sit here and ask you for certain amounts or nothing like that. Uh, I, I don't like doing that to anyone. There has been several people that have actually uh, sent money in for us, and we do know who they are, and we thank you so much. If you happen to be listening to this video, I won't call any names or anything like that, but there have been several people that have contributed. And, uh, and I think one of the most precious ones, and I don't even know this person's name here that sent money in, but they sent in, it was $2, it had four quarters taped to an envelope with a dollar bill as well. You have no idea how that touched my heart. It, I could not help but think of the little woman that Jesus saw putting in her three pence, because I felt like in my heart when we received that offering from this person that sent us in, that, you know, it was it was a difficult for that person to do that and it was a blessing and I just say to you whether you're a sister or brother whoever you may have been that did that because you did not include any contact information for us to get back with you on but I want to thank you and say God bless you it is it, it touched my heart the greatest of, of anything I've seen yet um, also, we'll put on the video on the screen here the address for our office if you prefer to send a check or a money order, if you prefer to do it this way here. Uh, but I'll speak it to you as well. It's Danoon Institute. You don't have to write anything else on there. Uh, but it's Danoon Institute, 3620 Colonial Boulevard, Suite 130, Fort Myers, Florida. And that's 33966. 
if you put a hyphen dash 1066 on there, it does help it get to us a little bit quicker. I don't know why that works out. But anyway, God bless you. I've kept you for a long time, and I, I apologize for, for being so lengthy in this video. But uh, bless you very much, and may we reach out to the Jewish people and be a blessing to them. Baruch Hashem.